Welcome to day 10 of the 12 days of Christmas series. Today I'll be creating a dino jump game, but with Santa instead. So here you can see I have a Pi game template ready for me. I've imported the library, initialized it, created my window, made a clock instance, and imported a font. In my main function, I create a while loop that iterates through events, fill my screen a dark shade of blue, and flip buffers. So when I run the program, you can see all of what's written. So let's get started with making a ground for my Santa to run on. So after my font, I want to create a variable called ground rect, and it's going to be pi game rect. And I want it to be at the very left side of the screen, and it's going to be about three quarters down. So window height times three quarter. And then the size of it is going to be the size of the window width, and then a quarter of the window height, since it's three quarters down. So window height divided by four. Then in my while loop, right after the screen fill, I can say pi game draw rect on my screen make it the color of snow. So RGB values 255, 250, and 250. And I want to draw my ground rect. So when I run the program, you can see I have a white ground. So let's get started with making the Santa. I'm going to make a new file called player, import pygame, make a class called player. And in my init method, I want a parameter called ground rect because I'm going to use its height to dictate how low our Santa can go. So it'll be sitting right on top of it. So I'm gonna say self.ground is my ground rect. And because I'm gonna be making an animated Santa, if I go into my resources folder, you can see I have 12 frames for my Santa. I wanna make a frame list. And in my past videos, I've used a function in a different file, but now rethinking it, if I have files named zero to whatever number the max is, then really I can use a list comprehension. So I'm gonna name this, this attribute frame list and then make a list out of it. And what I wanna do is load my image. So pi game image load, create an F string, and it's gonna be in my res send to anim, and it's gonna be a number. So I'm gonna put i in brackets dot png comma for i in range 12 and can't forget the convert alpha now because the center frames are not the size i want them to be i'm going to use transform scale so pi game transform scale add a comma here and resize it down to 32 by 32 and here i'll put convert alpha so now we import the image and scale it for i in range of 12 and this will give me a list of all these surfaces scaled down. So now for the animation attributes, let's make one called current frame and set it to zero. Let's have a self image, self dot frame list and index using my current frame. And then let's make a rect out of it. So self image get rect and then self dot position pi game vector two. And where I want it to be is a quarter of the window width. So it'll be in between the very left and the middle. So to use these variables across all my files, I'm gonna make a constants file. So new Python, name it constants. Here I can copy this, delete it, paste them here, and then from constants, import all. And I can copy this line, put it into my player, and now I can use window dimensions. So win width divided by four, and its Y placement is gonna be on top of our ground. So ground rect top. So if I create a draw method and have screen as my parameter, I can say screen dot blitz my current image onto my rect. So in my main file, from player import player i can create an instance under my ground rect create a variable called player and make a instance of my player object ground rect and in my wow loop i can say player dot draw pass my screen through it and when i run the program you can see my santa on the very top left and the reason that is is because even though our position is somewhere around here our rect hasn't been assigned to it so in my player class i want to create a method called move and i want whatever keys are pressed to be a parameter and my delta time pass through. So as the very first line, I want to say self rect dot bottom left is going to be equal to my self dot position. So when I go to my main and above my draw, I say player dot move pass keys and DT and I don't have either of them. So I'm going to say DT equals clock tick divided by 100 and above that keys equals pi game key get pressed. Let's run the program now. And now it's down here. So let's work on the actual movement. The only movement that the Santa really is gonna do is jumping. So we don't have to worry about A, D, or W, S, just space bar. So to get prepared for that, I'm gonna create a couple more attributes. Self.velocity is gonna be zero to begin with. Self.jump is gonna be 50. Self.gravity will be 20. And self.gravity will be 20. So in our move method, I wanna write self.velocity minus equals self.gravity times DT and my position y minus equals self.velocity times dt. 
So even though this will be a negative once gravity is pulling down on it, this is gonna turn it back to a positive. And when Y is being added onto, the Sansa will be coming down. And to get the jump going, if keys is pi game key spacebar, then I want my velocity to equal my jump value. So self.velocity equals self.jump. And now if we run the program and test this out, you can see we have a kind of flappy bird effect, but we want it to stop at the ground because you can see it's going below it. And the way to do that is if self.rec.bottom is greater than self.ground.top, then self.position y will equal the top of the ground. So let's run this now. And I can see the Santa stuck there, but you can also see that he's kind of glitching out. And that is because this calculation is continuously going, which creates some bugginess. And the way to fix that is to have a on ground Boolean. So I'm gonna create an attribute called self dot on ground, set it to true, because we do start on the ground and then trigger these only if we're not on the ground. So if not self dot on ground, we can tab these into there else. That's where we press the space bar. And whenever we press the space bar, then we're not on the ground anymore. So I'm gonna say self dot on ground is false. And as you may have guessed, once we do touch the ground, that's when self dot on ground is true. So now let's run it. And you can see that the Santa's not bugging out anymore, as well as another addition that because we can only press spacebar when we're on the ground, I can't continuously move upwards. So I can hold the spacebar, but it's only jumping when I hit the ground. So let's get the animation going. I'm gonna create a new method called animate and have delta time as a parameter. So with my current frame, I wanna keep adding to it and that will be what I use to index through my frame list. So self dot current frame plus equals delta time and I found multiplying delta time by two was a good enough number. So below that, I'm going to have a try and accept. So I'm going to try to assign my self dot image with my frame list indexing through an integer converted current frame. So self dot current frame because it will be a float and then accept an index error. So whenever current frame gets too big for an index, then I want it to start back at zero. So current frame equals zero. Now, if I go to my main function and above my move, I can say player.animate, pass my delta time through it. Now, if I run it, you can see my Santa running. Now, the window is too tall for my liking. So I'm going to go from 600 by 400 down to 500 by 200. And it'll also make our Santa look larger. There we go. And this looks a lot better. So now that we have the Santa done, let's create reindeer. So I'm going to make a new file called reindeer, import pie game, create a class called reindeer. And in my init, I want a frame list as a parameter, as well as passing through my ground right. So self dot frame list equals frame list. And the attributes that we need are basically just for animation and a constant movement to the left. So self dot current frame equals zero self dot image equals self dot frame list index my self dot current frame create a rect out of that image. So self dot image dot get rect. And I want my reindeer to spawn at the very right side of the window. So I will need to import my window dimensions. So from constants, import all. Then I'll say window width. And the Y position that I'm gonna get is the top of my ground. So ground rect dot top. And I want a speed for my reindeer. And I thought 20 was a decent speed. So now we need a animate method. And we can copy and paste this animate method from player onto the reindeer and it will perform the same thing. Only this time we don't want to multiply dt by two. So now let's write the move method. And it will be fairly simpler than the player because all we need is delta time as a parameter and two lines instead of a lot of if statements. So self.rec.bottom left equals my position. And I want to move the x value of my position to the left. So I'm subtracting from it my self.speed times delta time. And that's it for that method. And the very last one will be my draw with screen as a parameter screen dot blitz my image onto the right. So in my main file from reindeer import reindeer and below my player, I'm going to spawn one for now. So reindeer equals reindeer. And with my parameters, I need to create a frame list. So I'm going to do exactly what I did with the player and create another list comprehension. So I'm going to copy this and paste it right here and rename it dear frame list. And instead of Santa Anim, I want my deer Anim. And range 12 will go down to six because I only have six frames for my deer animation. And instead of the size 32 by 32, I want it to be 42 by 42. So now that I have my deer animation list, I can pass it through deer frame list. And now it needs the ground right. So I'm just gonna quickly pass that through it. And in my main loop, after my player is being drawn, I can say reindeer dot animates, pass in my delta time, reindeer 
dot move pass in my delta time and reindeer dot draw pass in my screen so when i run the program you can see my animated deer right there but now i want to spawn a bunch of them so i'm going to create an empty list that will append instances into so above my deer frame list i just want a deer list and it'll be empty to start with and now we want to create a timed custom event. So right after our window setup, I want to create a custom event called spawn event. And I use pygame event custom type. And then to create the timer for it, pygame time set timer spawn event is what I'll be timing. And I want it to trigger every second and a half. So now in my event handler, I can say elif event.type is my spawn event. And we can append an instance to the list. So I can just copy this instance in here, delete the top one, and then say deer list dot append my reindeer instance. And since this won't work anymore, I wanna iterate through the list and then animate, move, and draw from there. So for deer in deer list, I can tab these in and rename reindeer to deer. So if I run this now, you can see we have a deer here and another one separated by a second and a half each. Now, in terms of Christmas, reindeers can fly, so I want it to be random whether a reindeer is going to spawn in the air or on the ground. So to do that, I'm going to go into my reindeer file and create a parameter called spawn type. And I'm going to use that to dictate whether my vector 2 will be ground rec dot top or in the middle of the screen. So in the air. So I'm going to create an if elif statement. So if spawn type is ground, then I want my y position to be ground rec top. Else if my spawn type says air then i want my y position to be window height divided by two so the middle of the screen in terms of height and now instead of this i want to use my y position that i got from these if statements and it'll highlight and say it might be referenced before assignment the way to get rid of that because we will have either of those two is no quality assurance comments so now to make ground and air random argument in my main file i want to import random as r and then when the spawn event is queued i want to make a spawn type so it's going to be random dot choice between ground and air and it'll randomize a pick between those two and in between these two arguments i'm going to say spawn type and now if we run this program you'll see that reindeer can either spawn in the air or on the ground okay so let's get collisions working with santa and the reindeer and it's fairly simple but i do want it to be pixel perfect so in both the reindeer and player classes, I want to create a mask attribute. So below the rect of my reindeer, self.mask equals pygame mask from surface, and the surface is going to be my image. And because it is animating and the image will be changing, I want to reassign my self.mask after reassigning my image. And same with my player, under rect, get a mask from the surface, and in my animate method, do it again. So now that we have masks for both reindeer and player, we can use mask collision in our deer iteration. So in the for loop of my reindeer, I want to write if pygame sprite collide mask between the iterated deer and player, then I want to remove the hit deer from my list. Because if I keep it there, then it'll keep colliding. And then I want to say run equals false. So if I run the program and I collide with the deer, the program ends. But now I want the player to have three lives, so I have three chances of getting hit before the game ends. So in my player class, I want to create an attribute called lives and set that to three. And then back in my main file, if I get hit, I want player.lives minus equals one. And I'm going to print my player lives just so we can see it in the terminal. So when I get hit, you can see it says two left. But I want the game to end whenever my player has zero lives left. So right here, I'm going to say if player.lives goes less than zero, then run equals false. I'll delete this top line and then we'll see. So if I hit a reindeer, you can see the game still instantly closes. And that's because the deer still exists. So as long as I'm colliding with it, I will be subtracting one from my player lives. Now the way to fix that, I found the easiest way was to just kill the deer once we collide with it. So from my deer list, I want to remove the current deer that we just hit. So let's run this again. And you'll see whenever I hit a deer, it'll delete itself and I only lose one life. And once I go below zero, the game ends. So now I can delete this print line and now I wanna show my current lives on the screen. So I'm gonna create a text surface between my function and my while loop. So text surf equals font render, create an F string and it's gonna say lives left and in brackets, player dot lives and I do not want anti-aliasing and I'm going to make the color white because the background is a dark blue and using the surface I want to blit it on the screen so after all of that screen dot blit text surface 
at coordinates zero zero so the top left of the screen if i run this now you can see it says lives left three but whenever i hit a deer it doesn't go down because we're not updating it so as well as taking away a life here i want to reassign my text surface so below our player.lives we can copy and paste this entire line and now once we get hit it will update so i hit a reindeer and it goes down to two one zero lives left and then i die and i could have either programmed a way to speed up the reindeer or make a lot more spawn but i found it would be a lot more spiritual to have the star of bethlehem and you can see i have the image here so below my deer frame list i'm going to say star image and because the image is not the resolution i want it to be i'm going to transform scale it so pi game transform scale and image load and it's in res star.png at the size 40 by 60 and then convert alpha so now right above my text surface blitz i also want screen dot blitz my star image at coordinates let's say zero zero for now so when i run the program you can see there's a star and the way the star is going to work is that it's going to start on the right side of the screen and once it reaches all the way to the left that's when the game ends and that's when you win so i want to create a star x position variable so above the while loop i'm going to say star x equals window width minus the width of the surface and then above the star image bullet i want to say star x minus equals delta time times two and the way to detect whether it reached all the way to the left so we can end the game is if my star x reaches below negative star image get width so once the right side of the image gets out of the window that's when the game ends then i want run to equal false and now that we have a star x variable i'm going to copy and paste this into the x position of the blitz so now if i run the program you can see it starts on the right side and as long as i don't lose to the reindeer you can see that the star is about to end and it closes the program and i won the game this code will be on my github and if you want to download it and add your own windscreen or menu screen and show me in my discord server then i'll be glad to rate your projects thank you for watching and i'll see you on tomorrow's video